to Ray Make Shoemaker on the show, Play It Forward. She was nominated by Matt White of Stuff. We're talking to Meg about her film, Love Like, exploring some pretty uh, envelope pushing themes, which are pretty cool and well, um, well shown in this film. So, Meg, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Totally. Meg, Jumping into the first question, if you'd like to, you know, preface it with anything about you, uh, your background, please feel free to do so. I will definitely say you are a filmmaker. You wrote, you directed, and you acted in this film. Trifecta. Yes. Trifecta. Diving right into the first question, what was your inspiration for this film, this subject matter, and particularly focusing on the creative side and thematic side and the emotional side? So I think it's important to note that I did direct this, but I wrote it with my writing partner who was also featured in the film. She's the other actress and she's Caribbean American. And we went through an acting program together in New York City. And we were finishing the program and we decided to, uh, that we wanted to make a reel for acting work. And from that I developed a whole dialogue around what we wanted to, what kind of work we wanted to make, what kind of characters did we want to play, what kind of story did we want to tell. And through this, she's also a singer-songwriter and she's a performer. And through this incredible partnership of writing and also just friendship, we started to really hit a lot of sensitive, and maybe not even sensitive, but just really personal topics, especially around race and what it means to be <clears throat> black, what it means to be portrayed like that, what it means to um, have a relationship and these microaggressions. What we intended to write at first was something maybe not as, uh, I think, not quite as powerful. We were really coming from more of the character development aspect of it. And then I started, especially as I became really clear that I was going to be directing this. I, w I really wanted to say something that actually reflected our relationship and what we've talked about. And she really helped me to understand a lot of things that I don't know if I fully understood before. That's really cool. So you took the opportunity to craft this uh, co-production together to learn more about each other and, and to share your differences in your backgrounds to uh, help bring more consciousness to both sides of the equation, I'm sure. Absolutely. And I think yeah. that was what I was hoping is that um, when you watch this film, it's a story about both of them. And yet I think maybe the protagonist feels like Anna, the photographer. And she has the most, I think, kind of like, conflict internal and it's in the experience is happening to her from Coco. Um, but in the end you like her still, I think you just also feel like she doesn't get it. And it's less about disliking her, but we also see it maybe possibly in ourselves too. So it's almost like, you know, people could relate to both characters very easily. Yeah, totally. I mean, she's uh, the white woman's a sympathetic character because, you know, she does um, come to some level of admission of guilt or at least an understanding. Um, so she's receptive, right? She's, you know, receptive to change. So I think, you know, the audience doesn't lose um, connection with her. And probably that's, you know, maybe the biggest point of connecting with that character, you know, even prior to the you know, anything else, just because, you know, she's a little featured more and the story is more from her point of view. You know, she yeah. becomes perhaps most sympathetic in that moment of weakness or at least moment yeah. of strength. It could be both, right? Happening there. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so I guess that was the biggest the biggest impetus for that was the conversation that we had around the different shades of black and what that actually means. And I had no idea. And how do we talk about that? Right. <laughs> you know, no big deal. Just, yeah. 
It is interesting to be a white woman directing this film. I definitely thought about that a lot while I was making this film. Like, yeah. you know, cool. how is it my place to even write about this? I mean, obviously it was in conversation and writing with Kia, but you know, you know, what's mine to talk about and what what is um, left for another voice that has maybe more experience. And I think that's why I left it more in the Anna, the white woman being the protagonist is because I can tell that story more easily from my perspective without feeling like I'm, you know, uh, trying to speak for anyone else, you know. Uh, well, I cer <laughs> certainly appreciate you sharing that. And I can certainly sympathize with your hesitant, hesitant, hesitancy around that. <laughs> um, what, you know, my opinion is, and my thinking that I'd like to share is, uh, for example, Shakespeare did a wonderful job writing about Othello, right? Mm, so, yeah. um, and that's just one, you know, very classic, prominent uh, incident. I'm sure there are others, and, you know, the human wrapping of our skin is just such a shallow container for the depth of our uh, soul. Absolutely. So, I think that, um, you know, sympathy and the sympathetic imagination, if uh, that is... Um, honored can allow us to inhabit all sorts of uh, experiences and certainly that's you know one of the, the things that this film is conveying in hopes uh, of its message and that leads us right well into the second question is what is the message of the film? It, that question makes me want to sum it up in like a sentence or less but I think oh, it's okay. really about the awareness simply just awareness around um, figuring out how to communicate and what your differences are. I mean, I think at the very end of that film, there's a misunderstanding to a certain degree. I mean, as much as there is not a misunderstanding and as much as the audience knows the information that Coco doesn't necessarily know why her father uninvited her to this, you know, opening dinner. Um, and I did that on purpose um, because I think Anna also had a really hard time talking about that to Coco. And I think that there was a misunderstanding. And I think that misunderstanding, or not even misunderstanding, what clearly was like going on between Anna and her father, not being able to maybe air that to Coco, kind of left them in this problematic, misunderstood place. Well, the way I took it, and if I was Coco and put myself in her shoes, I wouldn't care what the father's reasons. I mean, that's beyond the point. The point <laughs> is that you got disinvited. You weren't taken off the list. So whatever it is, it's something um, prejudice. Yeah. So, you know, who cares what the deeds are on that? Absolutely. I think just internally in their relationship, what happened between her and her father affected the relationship with right. um, her lover. And I think it the message was more about, I guess, awareness, but also I think around like the structures. I mean, the father is obviously a, an example of the patriarchy, like not to be so heavy handed, but, yeah. you know, these older structures that we're living within and that are actually sure. kind of like being passed down generation by generation. And then you have maybe a moment to have a pure connection or, or creative connection or something. Yeah. And then it's like the passed on lineage interferes with that. And how do we, I guess it's just about bringing light to it. I really would love to answer questions. And I think what I find most interesting is to ask questions. Sure. as a filmmaker and I think that's why I left it with that moment which is my favorite moment and so important to me is the moment where they're not saying anything and it's just a back and forth mm -hmm. of silence <clears throat> yeah. of so many things said and nothing as actually said and all Anna can say is I'm sorry but that doesn't even really that doesn't even feel right in that moment you know and so Coco's left to walk away and it's more of the question, like who's gonna have compassion for me in this relationship? Like you're concerned about, I wish you would have compassion for what my father is doing to me, but it's like, wait, hold on. Like, what are you, you the same thing could be switched around for me. Totally. And we're all kind of the same and different. 
I think that's, uh, I love that. So what you said about awareness, I think feeds nicely into what we just discussed about, which seems basically communication, miscommunication. And then how do you bridge that gap with sympathy and who starts first, right? Who, who starts walking? Yeah, exactly. Meeting in the middle of the bridge. And that's the universal element that I find, no matter what this storyline is, no matter what you can relate to or not. I mean, the thematic storyline, when you take a step back, we've all been in conflicts with people, right? We've all not been aware of our actions and how they affect others. And then when we hurt those that we care about, how do we come back together? And how do we get beyond the miscommunication and start creating that bridge of sympathy and walking towards one another together in a meaningful way, right? So that's part two of your film. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, part two uh, of the film, yeah. It's left for us to wonder, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'd be curious in your own life. I mean, how do you, how do you approach that? I mean, I have really incredible friendships that open this dialogue. In fact, like, I think Kia, working with Kia was just an amazing, I mean, obviously it wasn't easy at all, you know, and our, relationship has changed from working together. Um, but how incredible to have the experience of making work that is literally healing each other. Yeah, yeah. you know, awesome. And so, you know, I'm also like in my other part of my life, I'm a yoga teacher and I- Me too. You are? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. Yeah. So I do a lot of that work. And oh, yeah. <clears throat> what I'm trying to do in every aspect of my life is this, this film is the same as maybe my teaching as a yoga teacher, which is to work on healing these parts of ourselves, which collectively hopefully would heal each other. And yeah. And then it, it actually, you know, it sounds a little bit. When I say it, I'm like, there's a smarter way to say that. There really is. But yeah, that's at the essence of it. That's, that's you know, how cool smart. is that? Yeah. I mean, I think that's the difference between entertainment and art. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, last question. Uh, what were the lessons learned in and off, uh, you know, the set production, the script, whatever? Mm, so many lessons. Um, yeah. So I think the next film I'm working on, I'll be directing it, I won't be acting in it. There were a lot of shots that I would have, I would have changed a few, I mean, I love the people I was working with. My DP is incredible. Um, <clears throat> yeah, very well shot. Yeah, I've, so, and I'll work with her again, but I think that there is just a little bit more planning in terms of image making and kind of certain ways. We did a lot of um, <clears throat> close-ups which I actually think did work for this, especially the last scene. But um, yeah, I have some other ideas of like how I'd like to make the next film and a lot of longer shots and more blocking um, and just be really concise. And I think I'll have a better opportunity to do that when I'm not doing so many parts of, um, you know, being behind and in front of the camera. So that was a huge learning lesson, and I think. Does that imply storyboarding? Yeah, I mean, we did do some storyboarding, but especially there were moments where it was kind of like, you know, we talked about it, and then it, you're there, and it's almost like an improvisational game, you know, which is one of my favorite parts about acting is, like, so much improv and so much spontaneity, and I want to keep that quality. I mean, we chose on purpose to do more of a verite style of like in and out. Um, I think I want to refine that a little bit, but keep some of those moving elements. And have it, yeah, feel kind of like still visceral and not static. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't, yeah, I definitely would want to work with a producer, you know, this time. It was a lot, I did a yeah. lot of, I was pretty burnt out after. And then not to mention just like submitting to festivals and getting a lot of rejection letters. And in fact, I haven't gotten one kind of like, yay, which is, you know, to be expected. And, you know, you can't do any of this actually. You know, I felt like so successful just having finished the film. But at that point, I just wanted to be like, oh, okay, great. Now what, you know, what's the next film? And, and so having to think about putting the film out there and that maybe people actually want to see it 
is a thing I, I really need to learn how to do is to be more, uh, to promote a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I think it's really important to have a team. And one thing I know is that working with my DP, when we worked together, I had two DPs. I had one and then he moved back to Europe and then I was working with this woman who I met on set in LA and she, she just made the whole experience so much better. And so I think like working with incredible people that from the start, they're just like their energy is like, yes, I'm like so into this. Like if someone can meet me with, obviously I have to keep that energy because it's my project. It's, you know, it wouldn't exist if I wasn't pushing it forward. Um, but if someone can meet me there, then those are the people I want to work with, even if they're not as experienced. Like the energy means more to me in this process. Um, than having a bunch of professionals who don't want to do what they're doing. It, it's huge. It, it's huge. And, it, you know, it, for my uh, journey from uh, filmmaker and uh, into software development, um, there is a law. It's called Conway's Law. And Conway's Law states that the product that you build is only as good. And, in fact, it replicates the communication structure of the people mm. who built it. Wow, that yeah. feels right to me. That feels yeah. very right, yeah. There's no point in putting all of that time, energy, money, like love. I mean, it's really disruptive of your life. It really, yeah, yeah. it was so worth it, but it was like yeah. um, cracking yeah. open. And I got yeah. my first gray hairs this oh, last yeah. year, yeah. And, you know? So it's like, okay, so now I also, you know, someone asked me to make something with them. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe, but like, now that I know just like how much and and like yeah. also the editing process for me, like I was not happy, not satisfied, not satisfied. And I had this whole vision of like going in and out of like the linear structure and and wow, my editor is incredible. Um who who was working with me on this, but uh that was a lot of that was like, you know, we didn't go to the beach this summer that we did that, you know. Yeah. It's like yeah. You like it's can't cool. go to that party, it's and it cool. and it's beautiful once you finish yeah. it. But yeah, it's like I understand the undertaking is such a pressure. Like you only have so much energy. So this next film, I'm really kind of considering it. Like really, what do I want to say? And really, like, like really prepare, you know, and get all the funding before, and not just like run out of money and then get a like Indiegogo account. You know, it's yeah. like it's I think like it gets really easier. <laughs> I think does find, it? Yeah, <laughs> okay, I think good. Find it easier. Um, the first one is is just. Uh, it's so worth it. I wouldn't it, have chosen is, any other, but I, I mean, I can't do it the way I did it last time. I just yeah, know that. Yeah, like, there yeah, just needs yeah. to be a little bit more support, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we'll see. Cool. And um, any parting thoughts on a emotional spiritual tip? What you learned? <clears throat> Hmm. Yeah, I think so. I I I'm a photographer, like as my first kind of art form, and the for me, what I've always been just shooting. I've always kind of been like never done with a project. I'm always kind of like, oh, I'm making portraits, and and I tie them up into these stories, and I kind of you know I've had I used to show a lot in San Francisco when I lived out there, but. I was kind of always working on the same project and it's like years later I'm working on the same project, you know, and it's like I'm never finishing projects. I mean, I just love the process of it. It makes sense. But this for me was like that moment where I was like, I got into a car accident actually and I had the script mm -hmm. and I, um, it wasn't, it was on the freeway. It was scary, but I didn't get hurt. I did get this scar across my face, but luckily you mm. can't really see yeah, it. Yeah, the resolution is pretty lousy, but it looks it's very subtle, but um, at that moment I was like, wow, wow, if I had died and I like have this script and we've been working on it and like we just never finished it, that would be a bummer. I was like, okay, this, that's, so it was like at the end of 2016, I got into that car accident, 2017, I, the first week of 2017, I went back to New York and we shot the first part of the film, the snowy scene mm -hmm. of the film, and I was like, I will finish this film this year. If it's like the only thing I do, like I don't care what it takes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to finish it. Um, as someone who 
loves, I mean, I'm a writer, I have so much writing, you know, I'm just now finally like putting it into book form. It's like, my process has been so loose and unstructured and I, because I just like it, but it's like, I guess what this film showed me was like, wow, if you just decide to finish something, that process alone will kind of like mm. reveal something better than you could imagine just because you're so dedicated to it and so committed to the end to and making sure it's ending. And of course it's not perfect. I would change so many things, but at a certain point I was like, okay, this is what it is and no more, no less. And it's done. And that's the most important part. <laughs> and what was the revelation? It's almost like, you know, in like Super Mario Land, I don't know if this is, this is such an old reference, but you know when you like get the mushroom and it like makes you bigger? Kind yes. Of? It's like, I feel like something like strengthened me and my strengthened my like resilience. And mm. I was like, holy shit, I'm actually way more capable than I initially thought with not a lot of help, right? I've figured this out. And with the help of like some really incredible people and that I'm closer with now, it's, yeah, so I guess, by following through and finishing it, I got to like feel what that did to me as an artist. And I feel like I could make another incredible film. I could take this experience and like finish another film, which feels beautiful. like success. That's a beautiful, probably one of the most beautiful reference uh, analogies to Super Mario Brothers. Uh, <laughs> definitely for me. Um, thank you, Meg Shoemaker. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet you, pleasure to have you on the show, pleasure to keep the conversation growing and uh, mushrooming together. And I look forward to hearing uh, <laughs> more work and more uh, mushrooming. And um, you know, thanks to Marijuana uh, stuff too. Yes. And uh, we're here, play it forward. Thank you, Meg. Really thank you. Thanks, Ray. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye. Ciao. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in this week. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and leave us a like and or a comment. It makes a big difference. Play Forward is brought to you by DigiPops, where we're building a community to put film and filmmaker discovery in your hands. Here, filmmakers and fans, the creative class, recognizes each other fairly and transparently through a community-curated film festival each quarter. It's coming soon. Thank you.